I'm in the elevator with my aunt, got this takeout container. Um, you know, like we had had a couple drinks, we're like rare and ready to go, and the elevator opens, and here comes Sammy Watkins. Hogan was in there. I'm trying to think, there was a couple other people in there, and I'm, I'm like, holy sh! I'm in the elevator with Sammy Watkins right now. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts Andrew Ganick and Justin Goddard. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. My name is Andrew Ganaik, and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. I'm very excited for tonight's episode. we got a jam-packed one for you. Uh, we're going to start things off by talking about some NFL news. Um, for those of you who don't know, J.J. Watt is not coming to One Bills Drive. Um, then after that, we're going to uh, talk about some other Bills-related news around the NFL um, that might pertain to us. Then after that, we're going to jump into our very first Wandering Buffalo uh, interview with Buffalo's own very, uh, Buffalo's very own Kate Cooper. After that, we'll talk about the wide receivers that we got in in Buffalo. Then we'll talk about free agents, draft prospects, and then uh, we'll wrap everything up in a nice bow and give you a sneak preview to next week's episode. Um, but first, if you haven't listened to our previous two podcasts where we talk about the quarterbacks or the uh, running backs, please do so. You can find us by searching on most social media um, platforms by looking up The Wandering Buffalo Podcast, and it will be greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, so let's talk about some Bills-related news. Um, Josh Allen and Dane Jackson were uh, briefly talked about in on um, the Chris Collinsworth podcast. Brandon Bean, you know, he said that he wants to give Josh Allen extension. It, it's not a matter of if he's giving an extension. It's more about when, and we got a little bit of an insight into that um, over this week. So it sounds like he wants to do it after the draft. So he wants to do it after free agency. He wants to you know, pick all his draft capital, and then he's going to do that. With the future cap being so unclear, it's it, it, it's kind of hard, and I, I get where he's coming from, and it sounds like he's trying to do his best to figure out where the number is. We know it's going to be around $180 million, but he, he's, he's really trying to figure out down to the dollar. I think he mentioned something about, you know, he's trying to figure out how many people are going to be in the stands. So it, it, he's really, like, penny-pinching, just trying to get the exact number on on the dot. Justin, how do you feel about that? I think I think it's a smart move on Bean's part. Um, I mean, I think there's probably conversations going on with Josh that's like, hey, man, we're going to get you the extension. We want to make sure we can put the team around you. Um, so as far as that goes, I mean, yeah, wait till free agency is over. Wait till, you know, the draft is over. You still got to sign a full draft's worth of players. And then it's just a matter of working out the logistics on what that number is, mm-hmm. how you maneuver the money around for this year, next year. And, you know, the general setup for what the money is going to be is probably already worked out. It's just kind of a matter of, you know, do we give you the extra signing bonus this year, next year? How do we kick around the money to make everything work? Um, so you're making sure that a competitive team gets fielded around him. And, you know, with Josh Allen, I think they want to get the extension done as kind of a show of good faith with him. Mm-hmm. But realistically speaking, you still have all of next year to play under. You have the fifth year option to play with if you're looking at maybe doing a Mahomes type of deal where, you know, he played on the fifth year extension before the actual, or I'm sorry, the fifth year option before the extension actually kicked in. So I think there's a lot of things in play there. I personally think it's a smart move on Bean's part. Let's just kick it down the road a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's get the draft over with. Let's get free agency done and kind of see where the cards fall at that point. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anyone if we wait just like a couple weeks later. But I feel like a new kid knowing that they're going to get a toy at Christmas, but like I want it now, but I got to wait till the 25th. Like, come on, bro. We know it's we we know we know what you're going to get us. Just just let let me have it now. But Bean's like, no, you got to wait. You got to be a good boy or girl. Um, speaking of being, he also, uh, talked highly of Dane Jackson. So what does this mean for Levi? Is it like, goodbye, Levi, my old friend? (laughs) Is, is he gone? Like we, I just, I just don't know what, 
I just don't know what it, it's like for Levi just knowing, hearing that because it's it's always been like the Bills have been trying to get him out of the building. Um, but he always proves himself. But Bean specifically talked highly of Dane Jackson. Justin, let's hear your thoughts. So I think uh, I think Dane Jackson is kind of in a similar situation as Levi was when he came to us. I mean, Levi was an undrafted rookie um, when we picked him up. Dane Jackson was seventh round pick. There's really not that much of a difference there. Um, I don't think it means Levi's gone though. I mean, this this team really likes to talk about their homegrown talents. They really like building from within, and you know, Levi's looked suspect at times, but he's also he's the number two cornerback across from Trey White. So automatically you're seeing like 10, 15 extra targets a game. Mm -hmm. And I think what they like about him is he allows catches. Yeah. But our defense is kind of set up to allow catches, but keep the ball in front of you. Mm -hmm. And he's been a pretty sure tackler. He's been pretty good at keeping the ball in front of him. He gives up a bunch of catches the the major difference I've seen in Dane Jackson's limited amount of reps because they're very simi- similar physically the way they play the game. Um, Dane Jackson's a little bit more physical at the line of scrimmage. He's a little more physical at the catch point. Um, but I I feel like being a little bit more aggressive at the catch point also uh, could open you up for getting burned a couple times. So I think he looked good in his limited action last year. Um, I think he's, as Bean likes to say, earned the right to compete. Um, I think he certainly should be in the conversation for competing for that number two spot. And hopefully this year we have more of a normal training camp and we'll see how it shakes out. But, I mean, Levi's also uh, a restricted free agent, so we also have the opportunity to match what anybody else would throw at him. So right. it kind of gives us an option to see what the number is before we have to do anything crazy. Speaking of competition, we all thought that, uh, well, at least a good amount of Bills Mafia thought that the Bills had a a real strong chance of landing uh, defensive end J.J. Watt that got released from the Houston Texans. He ends up signing with the Arizona Cardinals for two years, $31 million, $23 million guarantee. Justin, that's a lot of money, a lot more than I thought he was going to get. Are are you happy that JJ didn't sign with us? Uh, if if that if that was the price tag, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to give that up for him. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of positives to what he could have brought to our defense. Um, the way he commands double teams, all of a sudden it you know can free up Jerry Hughes, free up Ed Oliver. Um, but for that money. You know, I think you can go out and get somebody younger, more in the prime of their career. I do still think J.J. Watt has a lot to offer a team. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that price tag, I'd rather roll the dice on somebody younger that might be able to stick around for, say, five, six years, something like that. Um, at this point, J.J. Watt's battled a lot of injuries. I think he's still a great player, but how many years does he have left in the tank? Couldn't really tell you. I don't Yeah. So... You know, one thing that I noticed, one thing I took away from this is that a lot of fans of Bill's Mafia are like, yeah, you know, we didn't need him or anything like that. But, I mean, who, who, like, if you could get the guy in the building for a reasonable price, why not? I was not, I'm not comfortable of giving him $15.5 million if he lives up to that contract. That's not what I was hoping the Bills could get him in the building for. Um, But you know what this does, this signing, that signing does tell me is that, it, it gives me a lot of the same feelings of last year's trade deadline. Um, this team has a plan. They're sticking to it. They could take a shortcut or be baited uh, to pay big money to get a free agent or like a big name like J.J. Watt in the building, but they're disciplined. They were like, no, we have a plan. We could we could screw it up and like throw a lot of money at one person to bring him in, but being smart, he's like, no. We got a plan. We got to stick to it. Um, but speaking, yeah, I go ahead. I think that's uh, similar with like how Bean talks about the draft, where he puts a grade on a draft player, and you know if they fall in that range, he's going to go get them. Um, but it keeps you from overpaying in free agency. It keeps you from overdrafting players, and I like seeing him stick to 
you know, what the plan is. If we can get them at, say, maybe the number was $12 million, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting up in the range where you got to start sacrificing things elsewhere, you know, I'm, I'm good with the move that he made mm -hmm. or didn't make. Right. Um, moving on. Uh, NFL, I forgot the writer who said it, but, you know, it, it sounds like the Panthers are shopping Christian McCaffrey and um, they think that he'd be a great fit for the Bills. And... I think he'd be a great fit for the Bills, too. I just don't want to pay him all that money. And I don't even want to know how much it would cost to pick him up and who we have to cut to get him. So I, I think you look at our running back room, right? There's always ways to improve. But improving by taking on one person, and you're probably going to have to cut like three or four people to make that cap space, it, I, I, it's just not happening, in my personal opinion. But it would be great if we could have him for a reasonable price. But that's just not the reality of it. Um, so I, I personally don't think that's going to happen. Um, other news, Broncos released defensive tackle uh, Jarrell Casey last Thursday, and uh, the Texans released their running back Duke Johnson. Um, any, any notes about Christian McCaffrey, Jarrell Casey, or Duke Johnson? Justin? Uh, the, the Christian McCaffrey thing, sure, if you could get him in the building, that'd be amazing. But I think that's kind of a pipe dream NF, NFL offseason. Let's throw a bunch of scenarios out there. Plus, they would go uh, contrary into my prediction that I made last week. Uh, if you did miss that, I predicted uh, Christian McCaffrey going to the Texans in a blockbuster deal for Deshaun Watson. Um, realistically, I don't see it happening. I I would give up a heck of a lot of stuff to get Christian McCaffrey, but I, it doesn't seem realistic. Um, Duke Johnson is somebody that would interest me if he came at the right price. Um, I think he'll probably get a, a bit more than we'd be willing to pay. Um, but he's certainly intriguing, uh, especially as like a pass-catching running back. There's a lot of things that he does well. So they're always looking to bring in competition. I, I wouldn't hate Duke Johnson, but it'd have to be at the right price tag. Right. All right. Well, uh, this wraps it up for this week's news update. And now we're going to go straight into our interview with our special guest and first guest on the Wandering Buffalo podcast, Buffalo's own Kate Cooper. All right. So now we are joined by our very special guest, Kate Cooper. How are you doing today? Tell us about who you are, where you're from. Let us know. Let, let the people know a little bit about you. So I'm Kate. I am from south of Buffalo. I'm doing great. Um, anytime I get to talk about the Bills, it's a good day. Um, right. Yeah, I am an avid Bills fan, a teacher. Um, I've converted all my students into Bills fans. I feel like that's my biggest job this year as a teacher. Um, we're doing yes. great. <laughs> great. You, you got to start them young. So, uh, Monday morning shout songs is really how we like to start the week. <laughs> <laughs> great. You got, you know, you're recruiting them young. We love it. Um, so you said you're from like south of Buffalo. Are we talking like the first ward? Or are we talking like Doc Sullivan's? We're talking south, a little more south, um, Ellicottville, New York, which is home of Holiday Valley. Oh, um, oh, that's where okay. I was born and raised, right outside of there. Um, which you know, anybody who's not from there, Buffalo is Buffalo is the closest city. Right. So. Right. Yeah, right and, there. And now you're here in Rochester for the you know, teaching aspect, I assume, right? Yep. So I moved to Rochester, actually I moved to Brockport, um, mm -hmm. went to college, got my master's. I now live in Rochester for the time being, which is great. I really like it here. Um, nice. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like Bill's, Bill's city 2.0. <laughs> I, hey, I, I, I like to, I, I, I like that. that. I, I like that, that, that a lot. lot. Um, it, so, so I, I I, I do, do see yourself living in Western, Western New York, York in the future, and if not, how do you think Bill's life will be outside of the shell of Western New York? Yeah. So, like? um, not, I don't necessarily see myself here forever. For right now, it's a nice, uh, nice catch-all spot, you know. But um, definitely don't see myself here for the entirety of my future. Um, <laughs> As far as like being a Bills fan goes everywhere else, I mean, I think it has, I think, I, you know, Bills backer bars is where it's at. No matter where you are, where, you know, no matter what city you're in, I feel like it, mm -hmm. there, there's always a good one. So I'm not super worried about it. Um, 
I feel like people nowadays are like, oh yeah, they're just that's a Bills fan. We just let them do their thing. You know, there's really no questions asked anymore. I, I definitely agree with you on the fact that there's a lot of Bills backers bar. When I um, lived in New York City, I used to always go to this um, Bills bar called McFadden's, and I don't know if it's the Bills backers bar anymore, but let me tell you, for thirty dollars, you can have as many chicken wings as you want and as many like refills of domestic beer as you want. So you know it's blue light, blue cheese, blue wins. It hey. <laughs> great stuff. Um, Justin, you got a question for? Her? Yeah. So you said that you're a teacher and you're you're trying to get the kids started young. So just tell us a little bit about. How you became a Bills fan, you know, did you have a teacher when you were young? Was it kind of like a family thing? You know, is it just somebody in your life that kind of puts you onto the Bills? So um, my family is like Bills Mafia to the extreme. So my grandma has had Bills season tickets since 79. Nice. Um, so she's on, I don't even know how many years it is, a lot of years. Um, so my whole childhood, you know, my dad's side of the family was avid avid bills you know bills fans um growing up you know like we have pictures all around my dad's house like my have a picture of like grand my grandma and like bruce smith and um daryl talley i think is the other one like just framed like we have these the most random bills accessories like <laughs> you know just scattered throughout the house so my grandma grew not grew up but as an adult you know she attended um the the first time the bills went to the super bowl um you know she took my dad and my uncle which was super cool so I kind of just grew up in a household like there was no other choice. You were a Bills fan or like you didn't watch football with us. Like you weren't welcome on Sundays. Nice. And so that was super cool. Um, I kind of took a little, I don't want to say I took a break from being a Bills fan, but I kind of stopped following it a little bit through high school. And then I went to college and, um, you know, I was right back to Sundays at Bills Stadium, tailgating, uh, camping out the Saturday before the home opener. Smashing some tables. Smashing some tables, you know, throwing back some beer and calling it a good weekend. I mean, there's really nothing better to do. Well, that sounds sounds good to me. <laughs> Have you ever gone through a table yourself, Kate? You know, I haven't, and I'm not. I'm not going to say that I'm sad about not doing that. <laughs> I, I feel like it's maybe on my bucket list, but um, you know, getting up and having to go to work on Monday mornings doesn't really allow for too much table smashing. <laughs> It only gets worse the older you get, so get it in while you're young. It's true. You know, I I have done it, and it it maybe it was the copious amounts of blue light in my veins at the moment, but like I didn't feel a thing. And the next day, maybe maybe it was the hangover, but I I felt fine <laughs> outside of that. Um, so go go do it. It it could be a lot of fun. You never know, um, and it could be a great memorable moment. Speaking of some memorable moments, um, well, what it, what's the most memorable moment for you? So um, my most memorable moment, I know we're going to agree on this here, is the end of the drought. Um, um, you know, like being in my mid-20s, like that is the most iconic Bills memory, you know, to, to kind of surface since I've been able to follow the Bills religiously and, and really understand football and, you know, everything that goes into that. So... Um, you know, watching that and I was actually, the, the night of that game, I was with some friends who aren't football fans, like at all. And, you know, I'm like sitting there like sweating, like watching the game on my phone because no one else is interested in the Bills at this point. And, you know, it's New Year's Eve. Everyone's like got their own thing going on and I'm sitting there like glued to my phone by myself at a New Year's Eve party, like alone in the corner watching the Bills. Um, and it was just I, I mean I don't even know like what words describe how that feels you know it's it's almost like at that moment you feel like you're a Bills player yourself you're like we've worked so hard like we have done so much to get here you know like I, I've, I've just I've been here for the whole ride and, and you know then you're like well I didn't really do anything but um, so definitely my my top moment as a Bills fan so far has been that I mean this season was great too so that's you know that's right up there as well but end of the drought man that was something that I feel like not many memories are gonna you know surpass that one as far as the bills go until we win the Super Bowl yeah I mean so next year right right yeah, yeah. we're coming we're coming for you 2022 right so I remember where I was for the drought I was in Buffalo in my buddy Eric Alessi's apartment um 
and I just remember we're watching the game, and I told myself before that, like, Cincinnati and uh, Baltimore game started, I was like, yeah, you know, Cincinnati's going to win. They're going to come through for us. I didn't know what I was talking about, but, you know, I was like, you know, it, it could happen. Andy Dalton, the Red Rocket, he could pull through. And I remember my friend Elon was sitting on the couch as the game's getting closer to the end. Um, and he just goes like, <clears throat> like, puts his fist up to his mouth, clenches his teeth because he got a text message. And I was like, oh, God, it, it didn't happen. I turn around and look to the screen. I see that touchdown to Tyler Boyd. Not five. Obviously, we all, like, jumped and were just going bonkers. Like, like just copious amounts of alcohol definitely and i just remember later that like maybe 10 minutes later some guy was streaking down the middle of like um main street in elmwood village uh just i'm sorry in elmwood village just with his shirt off just banging his chest like crazy screaming like go bells go bells and i was like i want to be that guy right now (laughs) Justin, where were you when the drought happened? Uh, So I was working at uh, the restaurant that I used to manage, and when we when I saw that play come up on on the TV, I I was no longer a management manager of that establishment. It was like you know there were some Bills fans in the restaurant making a little bit of noise, but they were all drowned out by how loud I was. I ran across the room. I, I jumped into one of my server's arms. You know, we were partying like I wasn't working a shift right then, and kind of the moment passed a little bit, and I was like, oh, damn. I'm at my job right now. I, I got to act right. But, you know, that's something you're willing to lose your job over, right? Celebrating the bills. Mm-hmm. You got to take a chance sometimes. Definitely, definitely got to roll the dice. Um, so I know Kate and I agreed on the drought being, you know, one of our most memorable moments. But Justin, Justin, you got a little something uh, out of left field, right? Well, maybe not a little out of, out of left field, but a little different. Yeah, I mean, the drought pick seemed like the easy answer, but it, it also, if you guys were both going there, I figured I'd throw something else into the ring. Um, the moment that really stands out for me was uh, Kyle Williams' last game. Um, This guy, he's the type of guy that I feel like I grew up with. He was on the Bills for so long. It was like my formative years as a Bills fan. And he he was always just what embodied being a Bills fan was to me, what Bills football was. He was, you know, a late-round pick that, you know, people counted out, and he just worked his tail off, and he just kept grinding. And he ended up being one of the greatest in Bill's history. And I always just really loved him as a player. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this game, but it was, it was the tail end of the game. McDermott was putting him in as a running back. He was trying to get him touchdown. He was, he was doing everything with Kyle Williams. Um, and defense, he didn't end up getting his touchdown, but he was the, uh, lead blocker. He like pushed somebody into the end zone. So that was pretty cool. Um, but the defense comes back on the field and, you know, he trots out there, and and Sean McDermott takes a timeout for just, you know, the crowd's already all on their feet. And he takes this timeout and waits for Kyle Williams to come out of the game, and Kyle Williams says no. Yeah, and I remember it, that. And at that moment, you know, he's got the gray beard going on now, and you see his eyes watering up like like it's, it's, it's the end of an era. And just as he trots off the field, just the whole stadium just erupting, giving him that one more standing ovation. It was just such a great way for McDermott to send him off. And it was just such a great moment. And I was still, I still to this day, I'll water up a little bit thinking about that. I never wanted Kyle Williams to go. I love that guy. Yeah, Kyle Williams, uh, he, he embodied what? Exactly what you said. He he represented he was high class like you know in in not terms of like swanky but like as a person in terms of morals and he led by example and i feel like a lot of bills fans appreciated that and idolized him kind of similar to how you did and how how i did um 
You know, another fond memory of mine is when the Bills got that AFC East title this season. And I specifically wore this shirt for Kate. Listen, I kind of wore my matching one. I'm about to go go throw it on. And for for those of you who don't know what shirt I'm wearing, I'm wearing the all-white, the one-not-done uh, division champ t-shirt. And the reason why I put this on for Kate is because... I think like a day after we won, she posted a photo on her Instagram account of her at Bill Stadium. So she drove out there, took a picture with her and her friend, just out of excitement that, you know, this, I mean, that's something that you and I have never seen in our lives. So like, you gotta, you gotta go out for it. Absolutely insane. Like Bill, the, the Bill store, I mean, I, I've grown up, you know, like I said, a Bill's fan. I've been to the Bill store hundreds of times. And mm -hmm. just the energy that was reflected in the store that day, you know, it was like the Monday after the game was just incredible. Like people, it was like we were at a Bills game, you know, it's just like that hype that, you know, that happiness, like everyone's so friendly. It's like COVID didn't exist. <laughs> like nobody cared about anything. They're like the Bills, the Bills, the Bills. Um, right. And it was just, I mean, people are taking pictures for you left and right. And they're like, you know, random strangers are like, go, oh, go with your family. Like, let's take pictures. And it was, mm -hmm. I mean, I would have never imagined driving to the Bills store to buy a shirt would have been like a fond memory um, as a Bills fan, but it really was. It was such a cool experience. Um, you know, obviously like got some great apparel out of it too, but that in itself was just a great, you know, it, it really did showcase, you know, what, what being a Bills fan is like, like the, the extent that people go to, to, you know, to do things like somebody was like, yeah, we just drove down here from Syracuse. Like, you know, just, it was like a, a mom, a dad, and they're like six little children running around like crazy, you know, all, they all have their Bills gear on. And it was a really cool, uh, cool experience there. Definitely, definitely, um, definitely one for the memory bank, especially with these COVID times. Um, Justin? You're just killing it on the transitions right now, man. I love it. Um, so you just touched on it a little bit yourself, um, just with the with COVID going on and everything. So as a Bills fan, what was it like for you this season? Um, as far as like your experience throughout the season, what did you like about the season? What did you miss with the season? You know, are you somebody that goes to a lot of games that kind of missed out on that this year? Are you more of a stay at home and watch anyways? How did it affect your season this year? So I definitely, you know, go to a handful of games every year. You know, something I think, you know, as an avid Bills fan, you know, I grew up 30 minutes away. Like that was just something we did. Um, so I definitely missed that. I missed the, like, just, I, I honestly, this is the weirdest thing. I like missed like beer being dumped on me on accident seven times in the middle of Bill Stadium. Like, you know, it's like the iconic thing that happens every time you're at a Bills game. Like if a beer doesn't accidentally get dumped on you from the person behind you, like you didn't do it right. <laughs> like that's it. And so like it's such a dumb thing to miss, but you know, sitting at home watching the games, we just, it, I mean, it, it was the same, but I can't even imagine going through this Bills season and being there. Um, you know, it's like, I think a lot of people have questioned, you know, would Josh Allen have performed the way that he did if there were fans in the stadium? You know, would he, would he have cracked under pressure? And, you know, the Bills fan in me says absolutely not. You know, we would have had just as great of a run if we were all there to see it. So definitely was sad. Um, I think like I, I missed even the energy of like having a big group of people at your house on a Sunday. Um, you know, like I said, I'm a teacher. Um, and so, you know, I try to limit my outing as much as possible with COVID. So, you know, it's like one, two, three people hanging out for a Bills game. It, it just didn't feel right. Um, you know, I'm just really hopeful that's not the new norm because I miss like screaming Bills fans, like jumping off of counters and bars and doing like the most ridiculous things that no one questions because they're wearing a Bills jersey. Like it, <laughs> it doesn't even matter what you're doing, you're wearing a Bills jersey. Yeah, uh, that that was a that was a genuine and honest answer, and I think I can speak for Justin when I say this. I really appreciated every single word of that. That was that was very nice, um, and from the heart. So that that was pretty that was pretty cool, um, for lack of better words. Um, speaking of COVID, you know there and going out, we do have a debate that Justin has a question for you. 
Justin, let's settle the debate. Let's get Kate's input on it. This is this is Andrew's favorite thing that he needs to know. He needs to know from everybody. For your chicken wings, flat drum, blue cheese ranch. How are we getting them? All right, so we're duck. Oh man, I, I'm gonna pick a drum. I'm gonna go for it. Mm. But you know, like a chicken wing's a chicken wing. Like I don't really just like send them. You know, um, as far as the blue cheese and ranch debate goes. I grew up in Buffalo. Blue cheese is the right answer, but I'm going to go ranch. I'm a ranch girl at heart. Oh I God. know. I know. It really throws my whole personality. <laughs> get out. I know. Once every like 10 times I order wings, I'll be like, yeah, I'll get blue cheese today. But oh. I'm, yeah. We are, we are derailed. <laughs> wow. Just threw the whole podcast out the window. We're done. I don't know. You know to, I don't know how to carry on. <laughs> I stuck my neck out to the executive producer and Justin saying, I got to get Kate on this show. No, like she is Buffalo. She's got, she's basically got 716 written all over her, and you come at me with ranch. You didn't vet your candidate here on blue cheese or ranch before the show. I didn't think I had to. I didn't think you had to either. I've just it's... owned him at this point. People are always disappointed, you know? I think I blame my parents. My parents aren't blue cheese eaters, so. There you go. We'll just yeah. we'll give we'll throw it to them and they yeah. should have raised me better. Transfer the blame and we're good. good. Yeah, they should have raised me better. Yeah. They should have done better. <laughs> right. Well, well, let's let's put this in the rearview yeah, mirror. Let's move on. T- today we're talking about all things wide receivers. Um, Justin, I know you love our wide receiver room, so why don't you ask Kate some questions about that? Uh, so my number one question right now is for myself so i'm kind of posing it to others as well um john brown gets talked about a lot right now as a uh, possible cap casualty um what are your thoughts on that do you do you want to find a way to get him to stick around are you okay with you know going on to the next chapter what do you what do you think about john brown you know i think i could see either way i mean i think he definitely brings some unique characteristics to the bills team i i definitely don't want to see him go by any means um but I also, I also wouldn't be like distraught, you know, like, mm. you know, there's a lot of like all things NFL right now that are making me distraught. You know, I'm not going to point names or say that JJ Watt should have signed with the Bills, but like that may have made me a little distraught. But, you know, if we lose John Brown, I'll definitely, definitely grieve it a little, but I won't, it won't be the end of the world for me. I won't, I don't think it will like have an, this, you know, massive impact on how we do next year. Um yeah, I don't know. I would like well, to see him stay, obviously, but, I, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I, I land a little bit on the other side of the coin there. I think uh, his injury season has kind of got some recency bias built into it that we forget how how much he changes the offense. But if they end up letting him go, it's, it's, we got to trust the process, right? It's a process, man. Right. So you kind of just answered my next question where I was going to ask you, if the Bills could be, you know, as good if, as good if not better than they were last year, and it sounds like you think they can be. Is that correct? I definitely do. I think there's a couple factors into that. You know, I think if we can get Cole Beasley to play a season without, you know, breaking his fibula and playing a few mm-hmm. games like that, you know, I think he brings a whole set of, uh, you know, qualities to the table that we forget about because, you know, he was in and out this year. You know, and he obviously, I mean, even playing with a broken fibula was was playing better than, you know, I could imagine. But, um, you know, having him be re- fully recovered and ready to go, um, I'm obviously on the, you know, Alan Diggs train. Like, I think that the, you know, the partnership that they have there is, is something that I don't think can go south. I think they really have a, you know, an interesting relationship. Um, you know, it's like my, my, um, personal goal in life right now is like if I don't find like a partner who wants to have like a really cool handshake like Alan and Diggs like I don't want it like I'm, I'm out I don't even want it <laughs> um that's fair you know I do yeah. I am a little worried about Josh Allen with fans just in a sense of like you know you just had you just came off of this really great high from this season you just carried the bills through something that we haven't seen in our lifetime um you know will having fans there impact that negatively I sure as hell hope not, but you know, you never know. That's like a factor that we don't we don't know. We can't really control that one. So I'm definitely really interested to see. But 
I am, I am fully confident that the Bills will come out next year just as great. Yeah, uh, the, you touched on that a couple times, and I just wanted to throw a thought out there because um, I see it all over the place, like Will Sugar, Hi Josh, come back and all that. I'm not overly concerned about it. He made leaps into his game this year that are like – unprecedented for for where he was to where he is now and you know if if fans in the stands or not was part of the effect on that don't we think we would have saw a couple other quarterbacks making some leaps or like some of the quarterbacks that have been in the league for a few years longer maybe they have their best season you know everybody else seemed kind of at their normal play and he just went to this whole different level i think his confidence was just you know you got a couple wins under your belt and his confidence was just like Mm -hmm. like i'm josh allen like here i am like i'm here to play um and so you know i think i think he'll carry that through for sure i work on cantaloupe farms (laughs) right his confidence was basically like dogecoin before the super bowl to the moon man um you know just to touch upon that just real quick from my personal opinion I think that Josh will do fine in front of crowds. I mean, we did have fans there. I use the word we royally. I, I, I didn't do anything. But the Bills did let like 6,700 people, which, again, is not that much, into the stands against the Colts. And he played very well in that playoff game, which we saw last year against the Texans. He played well for like a half, and then, you know, things kind of crumbled. But, you know, whatever. Um, so that that's my little caveat in that little, or my little two cents into that uh, situation. But I definitely see where you're coming from, Kate. Um, again, we're talking about all things wide receivers, and I, I got it. You, I already know this story because the first time we met, you told me this story. Tell us about your, I guess, in my personal opinion, he should be your least favorite Buffalo Bills wide receiver, Sammy Watkins. Tell us the pizza story. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like I said, I, you know, I frequent Buffalo pretty often. It's one of my favorite places. Um, and I had, uh, you know, I had a family member in from out of town. And, you know, she was, she's a Bills fan too. Obviously, it's my dad's sister. So she grew up Bills fan just like the rest of us. You know, she's like, I want to I want to go to the 716 restaurant that everyone's talking about, right? Which, by the way, today was announced it's no longer 716. The, they're selling it so just a little tidbit of information there but the classic 716 like we gotta go we gotta go we get there they're closed for a private event which is I'm like oh man you just flew to Buffalo and we can't even go to 716 so we go to Pearl Street you know another like classic in Buffalo um, for you know obviously nobody knows this I'm gluten free it's a really sad character trait about me it's my least favorite thing about myself um, so you know I'm at Pearl Street I order a gluten free pizza It doesn't hit the spot. It's gluten-free, but whatever. We eat it. Um, I take, like, three-quarters of it home in this fun little, like, takeout container. Whatever. I'm walking back. I'm on an elevator. Um, 716 is connected to a whole bunch of other things. There's elevators everywhere, parking garages. You know, it's like the the hub of Buffalo. I'm in the elevator with my aunt. Got this takeout container. Um, You know, like, we had had a couple drinks. We're, like, rare and ready to go. And the elevator opens, and here comes Sammy Watkins. Hogan was in there. I'm trying to think. There was a couple other people in there. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm in the elevator with Sammy Watkins right now. I'm like, wow. And I'm just like kind of taken aback. I'm like, do I do I talk to him? Do I not talk to him? What do I do here? So I'm just like standing there like with my, you know, takeout container of pizza. It's like a small 21-year-old girl. And uh, he's like, what's in that takeout container? And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, pizza? And he's like, yeah, let me have it. And he like literally takes my takeout container, opens it up, and just like mouths down my pizza. And I was like, okay. So Sammy and I are really close. I'm um, really great friends. Um, I like to, you know, Andrew always says like I am. I'm the reason that Sammy left Buffalo. So he had to eat gluten free pizza, and then he was like, I gotta get out of here. Like this is not it for me. <laughs> Which you know, I don't blame him there. But it's definitely a fun story. Um, you know, being a Bills fan, I feel like we, I, I've seen a handful of Bills players like throughout Buffalo, but none of them have ever just taken my food and eaten it without, you know, really asking or anything. So um, he was I feel like most entitled. people can say that. What'd you say? 
I said I feel like most people could say that. Yeah, you're right. You know, I haven't really had a had a Sammy Watkins come eat my pizza until then. So it's a really fun Bills memory for me. You know, a little a little traumatizing in the best kind of way, but um, mm-hmm. it's it's you know it's a good story to tell. Um, I wasn't a super big fan of Sammy. He was kind of an ass. Whatever, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, you know, I I don't know how I would react if you know I'm I'm sitting there and I'm starstruck. Right, right. And then and then my one of my idols just go snatches the food out of my hands, and then he doesn't even play in Buffalo. Like the next year, he, you know, and I understand that's not his fault, but then he co- he goes and turns his back on the city saying like, oh my God, like my life was so bad there. Like you I got free you pizza. Know. Like, yeah, you got free pizza and you're an adult. You can make your own decisions and you can accept the consequences of those decisions. Don't blame it on the gluten free pizza. Don't dude. blame it on the <laughs> pizza, Sammy. Come on. Like for real. Um, another note on Sammy, I remember you and I texting each other on the night of the Super Bowl when the Chiefs played um, the 49ers, and we were all about Sammy Watkins just because, like, he's the only Bills player that I knew w- that was in that Super Bowl. So I was like, "Some somebody's got to get it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that was, yeah. Sammy, man, yeah. I don't know. Unbelievable. He really came in, came in strong, left a lasting impression on me, to say the least. Right, Justin. Uh, so that's that's about it. I got uh, that's about all I got for tonight. Uh, just kind of wrapping up. What are you looking forward to most next season? What are your expectations? Where do we go from here? Um, I mean, I feel like I touched on this. I'm really excited to see Beasley play. Like, hopefully, you know, consecutively throughout the season. Um, I think, I just think he's a really great player. Um, I also am, this is going to be a weird, a weird, uh, little thing, but I'm excited to see Isaiah McKenzie. I'm really hoping he like makes some good strides forward. I don't know. There's like something about him that I just like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm rooting for him. I'm always rooting for him. You better hope we resign him then. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm hopeful. Um, and then, you know, like, like I said, I'm like really hopeful for the, the Allen and Diggs combo. They're so fun to watch. Um, they bring, they really like embody Buffalo football, you know, just like watching them actually have fun while they're playing and, you know, remembering that it is football. They're there for the same reasons that we are like to have a blast and, you know, make everyone around them happy, which it's just, it's super fun to watch them. I think, you know, Buffalo, I haven't seen a duo like that. That really is so fun to watch and just makes me laugh. Like, throughout the game multiple times so i'm excited to see them and and watch them kind of further themselves especially since they're both so young you know hopefully hopefully the bills is it for them and and this is this is their uh you know their end all for a little while so right yeah um again kate with kate with the perfect comments i i everything that you said tonight it's it's just been spot on and it sits right with me um, Kate, where, where can the people find you if they want to hear a little bit more about you? Do you got a Twitter, an IG account? What, where, where can the people find you? So, man, Instagram's the place to be. I love to post mm. Bill's photos. Um, I don't even know what my Instagram handle is. Let me do a quick check. It is, um, oh, it's Kate.Jean underscore. That's Kate, K-A-T-E. Just to clarify that, it's not K-A-I-T. That's the wrong way. I'm just going to mm. say it's wrong. Um, so Kate, K-A-T-E dot Gene underscore. That's me. Fun redhead. Usually posting Bill's pictures. Right. So you can correct people how to spell the name Kate, but you, you're the one trying ranch on wings. I see. Okay. I was going to um, let it go. I, I, I can't let it go now. <laughs> <laughs> we all have character flaws, okay? That's all good. Um, do you have any questions for us, Kate? All right. One question. Ready? What is your favorite part about being a Bills fan? Justin? Uh, for me, it's the community. Um, you know, the, the winning seasons are so much fun. This past year, whole season, like most of us have never seen in our lives. But literally through 25 years of my cognizant football watching, we've had mediocre at best teams. And there was still 
you know, stadium every week, 70,000 strong out there, just riding with the team, having a blast partying. And, you know, through all the highs and lows, we've always rode with the team. And, you know, just that sense of community, the way the whole city of Buffalo is buzzing when it's a game day. You go to Wegmans and there's everybody you see with the jersey on. Everybody's got the Bills hat on. It's it's just so much fun to be part of something bigger than yourself like that. Right. So the question was, what do I... What do I like being a Bills fan? Yeah, what's the most? your favorite part about being a Bills fan? Oh, what's my favorite part of being a Bills fan? Um, well, do you care if I if I tell people how we met? No, not at all. Okay, so this this is kind of a long winded answer, but so like Kate and I met on a dating app, um, Hinge, and. We 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 decided to go to a Rochester bar dive bar downtown, um, Acme's, and I remember we were just we did we were trying to make small talk like before and when we met each other, but it eventually just revolved around the bills, yeah, and the fact that she was wearing her dad's um, old crew neck sweater. So I I saw the size of the sweater and I knew. I can't really mess with this girl because I know the man that fills that <laughs> sweater out. So be on my best behavior kind of type thing. But it was just, and this is my answer. It's the fact that you can meet people in multiple situations and you can always come back to the bills. And it, it's it's such like a, it's just so nice to like have that common ground with someone else and that's how you can talk to them and that that's probably my favorite part of being a bills fan you don't got to be an expert we're not experts we're just we're just average people having conversation yep so, so that that's my that's my long-winded answer i mean you have, you like have to it. tell everybody what you wore though like i wore i wore my crew neck you know i've got a, i've got a nice collection of those but oh. you showed up in <laughs> Oh um, man, I I had like one of those OG um, starter jackets from like the seventies that like Mar Marv Levy had, and um, he it, it belonged to some guy named Adam T. But you know, it it now belongs to Andrew Ganaik, so that's 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 about the size of it. Gotta gotta change that out. Um, uh, Kate, you have any other questions, Justin? I'm good. This, mm -hmm. I love the Bills, man. Every time I talk about the Bills, I feel like I'm just like grinning ear to ear because it's just it's the Bills. We we are the Bills, you know. Like we 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 do all the work. <laughs> right, right. Um, let's see here. Well, um, thank you again, Kate. It's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join our show. And like I said, I'm so happy that you decided to be the first person on our podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. Yeah, we'll do it again, again sometime. sometime. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I hope um, hope your next uh, guest is a has a better uh, wing answer for you. I think I, I, so I, th too. I think I set the standard. So now everybody knows what the right answer is and how not to get roasted on the podcast. <laughs> hmm, right, right. All right. So if you'd like to, to join, join our show, show you, you can email us at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast or DM us, D give us a DM on most social media accounts by searching the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Go Bills! Go Bills! If you'd like to join our show, you can email us at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast at gmail dot com or DM us or DM us on most social media accounts by searching the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. I, you know, I, I'm so happy that we got Kate on the show. When when I was thinking about, you know, the first person that we could have on the show, Kate was the number one person that went on my mind. I just just that story about Sammy Watkins and the pizza, it, it's just so funny. Such a cool girl, down to earth, and she just loves the Bills. She loves the Bills so much, and that that's that's why we're that's why we're friends, and that's why I know her. Um, really good person. Um, Justin, you want to say anything about Kate? before we move on no, to the wide just, receivers just a pleasure having her on the show it's always you know great to have a conversation with somebody that's as passionate about the bills as we are right mm. thank her for joining us yeah we we definitely want more people like her on the show so again if you want to join our show send us a dm or email us um justin 
We're going to move on to the wide receivers that we have at one Bills drive. Um, and, you know, this position group, they are definitely responsible for a lot of my friends' hangovers. They're, we have we have this game. Shot per touchdown? Yeah, something like that. Or like Allen Brown first down shot. Or like Allen Diggs swig. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, you just scream Beasley. Uh, speaking of Diggs, uh, that's where we're going to start things off. Uh, he had 127 receptions, had 1,535 yards, eight touchdowns this season. He led the league in receptions and in uh, yardage. What an amazing trade. Win, win for the Bills and the Minnesota Vikings. We gave up a lot, but looking back at it, perfectly reasonable. I, I personally don't think he was a drama queen, and if, you know, Minnesota thought he was a drama queen it's clear that he just didn't fit the makeup or the culture of the minnesota vikings and that's fine because he fits in perfectly here he he reminds me of like you know um uh, like i i don't know why but this reminds me of when i was like in high school and i would play like gym class mat ball and i would just knock down a pass or something and i remember this one kid was like next time catch it and i was like geez man this guy's pretty intense but best believe when that ball came back to me next next time, I caught it and I intercepted it. So, like, I don't know. He 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 tries to elevate the other people around him, which is real cool. Um, wow, I'm experiencing a windstorm around here. Our trash just uh, flew out the side of the house. So that's yeah, pretty it's pretty funny. wild weather out here too. Yeah. Um. Anyways, he elevates the game of other people. He's a franchise altering wide receiver, but he doesn't get paid like it. He's making around twelve ish, I believe. He he might need a pay bump. Justin, what what are your what are your thoughts about Stefan Diggs, the acquisition, the player that he is, and if we need to give him a pay bump? Oh well first of all, I'll pay the man. And I'll chip in to keep him around. Um as far as the whole drama queen thing, you know, it happens with a lot of players in the NFL. Sometimes it's just you know, it gets to a certain point with the team and it's better for both parties to get a change of scenery. And, you know, Justin Jefferson came in, had one of the best season rookie seasons for a wide receiver ever. So, you know, they're not losing any sleep about it. And, you know, I'm I sure I'm glad he's on the team. Um, I mean, when you see other re- receivers in the league, you got Amari Cooper, uh, some of the other guys getting $20 million a year. Yeah, Diggs absolutely is probably going to ask for a raise and as well within his rights too. Um, I think that's another one where, you know, you can kind of restructure it and give him a raise and actually end up on the better side of the cap while giving him a raise. It's certainly deserved. You can't argue against that. You know, he's leading the league in all these stats and what a win for Josh to get him, you know, right from the, Right from the jump, they seemed to really click and panned out across the whole season. It was just a dynamic duo together. So, yeah, keep that together as long as you can. Right. Like I said, he elevates the game of the people around him, and we saw that with Josh Allen's production. What a great, great, great trade. Um, Speaking of uh, production, let's talk about our man Beasley. Old, reliable Beasley. I am, man, when, when the Bills got him, I was so happy. And you could see that last year that, you know, he, he was pretty good. And then this year, he he really took off. Like, he, I don't know, I, I, I just knew that Beasley was a great um, signing. He, he's like, he's kind of like that Elman Shifty slot receiver. Like, he was AP um, pro, I think, like second team because he is the game's best slot receiver. Um, he's, like, at, like Diggs always said, he's always open. Diggs is always open. He even contributed after he broke his leg. Like that that takes some that takes some steel guts, you know, and some brass. Like he he's he he's got me and he's got me. Like I, I, I am a Beasley fan through and through. So close to a thousand yard season. If he didn't have that broken leg, he would have got it, but then played even on it afterwards. He was just like, you know what, put me in the game. I can't sit on the sidelines. Put me in eight, the game, coach. Yeah, I know. He had 82 receptions, 967 yards, four touchdowns. Justin, t- 
tell me that you have the same affinity for Beasley as I do. Uh, he's probably low key my favorite player on the team right now. Uh, first, first of all, he's got the best hair in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to argue that, I'll go toe to toe with you. Um, but I, I just love the dude. I love the heart he plays with. Um, you know, what I really like about our receiver room is they all kind of offer their own little things. And Beasley's that guy that on third down he's finding a way. And with the team in general, how many times in my lifetime I saw us getting like a third and fifteen plus situation and you chan gailey offense and here comes a draw play here comes a screen play not this team we're pushing the ball down the field and you know beasley's converting third and 22s third and 23s he's taking licks to do it i just think he offers so much grit to the team so much of a an x factor that like okay we got to figure out how to deal with digs and then you have this whole second monster in the slot to deal with mm-hmm. and I, I just I love the dude. I I hope he retires a bill. It's, it's been such a pleasure to watch him play. Uh, also, not not a half bad rapper. I don't know if you've ever checked out any of his music. Sometimes. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, he, he's good. Sometimes I, I'm in my feelings. Yeah, he, he gets me in my feelings when I when I see him play and suit yeah. up on Sunday. So shout out to Cole Beasley. Your fire on the on as a rapper and as a player. Uh, moving on, we're going to talk about John Brown. John Smoke Brown. Twenty, His season, man, it's just been injuries after injuries and injuries leading him to IR. And you know what? He just didn't look right for so many games. Some games he looked vintage, like the Miami game, both of them really. And then other games he just didn't look that great, and like the KC games. Um, you know, he, he said, uh, when the season was over, he was unsure of his future in Buffalo. Um, and, and that's just so unfortunate. I love John Brown and there, there's question if he's going to be a cap casualty. It, like, is he going to get restructured? Is he going to get let go? I, I don't know. I, I, I want this team to have John Brown. He provide he stretches the field. And when he's on there, man, he he's great. Uh, for this season, he's gotten like 33 catches, 458 yards, and three touchdowns. And uh, you know, they those stats don't really show a whole lot, but he's he's a lot better when he's healthy. Justin, what 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 are your thoughts on John Brown? Do we keep him? Do we restructure? Like, what what's going on? Do we let him go outright? So I I think Brown is. Um... Hang with me here. I think Brown is similar to Milano, but for the offense. Whereas when he's on the field, whether he's getting the targets or not, the offense is just different with with him on the field. Now, whereas Milano is a young man in the prime of his career, up for his first major payday, you know, Milano or I'm sorry, Brown is getting towards the tail end of his career. You know, if he tests out the free agent market, you know, sees what's out there. There's probably not, you know, a huge payday coming his way. I think he's the type of guy that might want to, you know, restructure, maybe extend him a couple of years and make his um, cap hit a little bit more uh, palatable. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not a guy I want to see walk. We'll get to Gabe Davis. He did a great job in his rookie year. But and Brown just offers that taking the top off the defense, mm-hmm. you know, you got a double team digs. Now you got to worry about Beasley in the slot. And oh yeah, you still have Brown running a four three four four, just ripping down the sidelines that you have to count for as well. I think it's one of my favorite things about this receiver group is how well they play together, mm-hmm. and how many years I just watched that be one of the weaknesses on our team. Oh god! Yeah. And we just got this core right now that I want to I want to run it back with them. I mean, we're talking what two three years ago was like. Deontay Thompson, Zay Jones, and Kelvin Benjamin, and now we're here. So I want to see Brown healthy for a season. I'd like to see you know him get a uh, – it'd probably be like an extension with a restructure. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see him here for another two, three years till you, till you find somebody that can do what he does. Right. It sounds like you're in the opinion – you're of the opinion, rather, um, that – it's probably best if we tack on another year and spread out the money that he has this year over two years, correct? Right. Yeah, I, th- I, I would agree with that. I don't, I don't want to let him go, but if the Bills do that, I get it. But then you're just creating another hole for this team. Um, and, you know, to John Brown's injury, it, it's he, he just 
yeah, it sucks. I mean, he, he's even got sickle cell, uh, the sickle cell trait. And for those of you who don't know, um, sickle cell is like, it, the basic human being has a circular red blood cell, but with the sickle cell trait, it, it's a disease that makes that circle into a fraction of its size, more of like a sickle, sh sickle shape. So it causes your cells to die early, and it's harder for the body to deliver proper oxygen, so it, it's like a greater chance of fatigue. So John Brown, to play with that sickle cell trait and still be the player that he is, is insane to me. Like, he's basically playing, like, like through injury at all the time, and he's damn good at it. Hmm. Um, moving, And I'm not a doctor. Definitely not a doctor, but just saying. Um Moving on to Gabe Davis, uh, the man who usually replaced John Brown when he wasn't on the field. I, stealing the fourth? I think so. I think he did pretty good. I was very infatuated with how Gabriel Davis performed. Um, he proved that he wasn't just a go-up-and-get-it kind of receiver. Like a, He proved that he just didn't big-boy people like, uh, you know, like CB2s. Uh, my favorite catch from him Oh, man, it's got to be that San Francisco catch where Josh Allen throws it right over, right over, um, oh, God, who's their middle linebacker over there, Justin? Am I Ward? Eh, whatever. He, th he throws it Warner. out. The, uh, yeah, Warner. He throws it right over his tips of his hand, and he, damn, Gabriel Davis, Davis is right there, snags it, and we pick up the first down. I, do we have big expectations for this man next year? Are they justified, Justin? And if we do let go of John Brown, can he be the number two? Um, I I have big expectations for him. I think he definitely over um, outplayed his draft slot. Uh, as far as throwing him right up into that number two spot, uh, I mean, I'd like to see him maybe one time develop there. Uh, if we get a couple different pieces um, that can replace like the John Brown production and what he does, but part of the reason I love having John Brown around is he's he's such a refined route runner. He's got such all that top end speed. Um, Gabe Davis blew my mind. I'm I'm sorry, Gabriel. I know he prefers Gabriel. Um, I really enjoyed him, but I think he also benefited from having that number four role with, mm -hmm. like I said before, you. Know, you're rolling a double team to Diggs. You got to deal with Brown going up the sideline. You got Beasley hurting you over the middle. And oh yeah, we forgot about Gabriel Davis. Who's matching up on him? Mm -hmm. So I think that was part of you know what we saw in his development. There is him just bursting onto the scene. I think he certainly played his tail off, and that contributed to it. But I think also he kind of benefited from the situation that he was in. So that's part of my reasoning for wanting to run it back with what we got right now. Right, Gabriel Davis uh, showed out pretty well for a rookie. Seven touchdowns, 600 yards, 35 receptions. Uh, and, you know, the the best thing about it is he's still developing, and he's only going into – he's just about to enter his second year. So I'm pretty excited about what Gabriel Davis can bring to the table um, to complement the other wide receivers, as you mentioned. It, it's just exciting. It's an exciting time to have – a wide receiver room that looks great that's arguably one of the best in the nfls and that's pretty sweet uh moving on to our next receiver isaiah mckenzie the gadget player the backup punt returner kickoff returner jet motion man uh even though we kind of got away from it last se uh in the towards the second half of the season um i personally don't know why but you know whatever um and he's a free agent i I love Isaiah McKenzie, and I love him because I remember rookie year for Josh Allen. To your to your credit, we had what Calvin Benjamin, um, then we cut him Deontay Thompson, Zay Jones, and then out of nowhere we signed Isaiah McKenzie off of Denver's practice squad, and he was like a quick injection of like offense, and I was like, mm -hmm. I like this guy. I like him. He's he's got a little he's got a little pizzazz to him, and he he does a lot. You know, Isaiah McKenzie, you're the man. I love you. I I hope you're back. Um, if you aren't back, I wish the best of luck to you, Justin. How do you feel about our man Isaiah McKenzie? 
Uh, so my favorite thing about Isaiah McKenzie, other than all the bursts, all that stuff he has, is he's a little guy running around out there, and he's never just ducking out of bounds, avoiding hits and everything. That dude finishes every play. He's got somebody draped on him, and all of a sudden you see him spin around, and he doesn't always go far after it, but his legs are always churning. He's always trying for that extra yard. Um, I love the dude, too. Um, I know he had a post right after the end of the season, um, basically saying that he wanted to stick around in Buffalo. Um, we'll see what that what that number looks like for being a luxury extra gadget weapon. And I'll kind of touch on uh, Andre Roberts at the same time here. Um, So between the two of them, I'd like to see one of them maybe stick around and continue that role. Um, But I think with how tight the cap is going to be and, you know, how many spots you're going to have to fill holes at and whatnot, I think that's an opportunity that might be able to save a few million dollars and consolidate that position. Um, Personally, I would lean more towards Roberts for what he offered us in the return game. And not just, you know, his obnoxious, awesome returns, but also the smarts with it. You know, when he lets the ball go over his head, um, when he's doing like the fake fair catch and the players are circling him and the ball's bouncing into the end zone, um, the little intangibles. And we did see a little flash from that with McKenzie. So maybe he could kind of take over that role and replace it as a, as a younger option. Right. Um, We'll see what happens there. Right. So, McKenzie, five touchdowns this year, 282 yards, 30 receptions. Andre Roberts, four catches, 34 yards. It's clear that uh, we know out of the two players who sees the offensive side of the ball more than special teams. Um, Andre Roberts, he is a wide receiver by name only, and it's clearly shown in his stats. But... You know, and he's also a free agent, but when you look at McKenzie and Roberts, I feel like those two are always come, uh, like, put together because they're, you know, you want someone to, like, fit both of those roles. It, but we'll, we'll get to that later in some free agents and some wide receiver, um, draft prospects that could do it. Uh, but let's move on to Isaiah Hodgins. Um, we, we just know that he did pretty good in camp, but we didn't really see it. He got on. He made the team roster, but then got put on IR the same day. So I think he's got some upside, but it's too soon for me to personally say. And I just don't. I just don't know anything about him. Uh, I, I've seen. I saw his. Uh, you know, college highlights at Oklahoma State University. Those are pretty cool. But you know, well, Justin, tell tell me how you feel about Isaiah Hodgins. Uh, so what what intrigues me the most about Hodgins is a lot of the a lot of the mock drafts and people that I look at that follow drafts. Most of them had Hodgins rated higher on their boards than Gabriel oh, really? Davis. I didn't know. Yeah, that. and so you know when you get into the later rounds, it it kind of becomes a crapshoot. Mm. Um, but I mean for. It's the same scouts looking at these people. So, you know, what they saw in Gabriel Davis, you know, if a lot of people thought Hodgins was a better talent than him, I'm just interested to see what he has to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. He's got a little bit of size to him. You know, we'll we'll see what happens, but as far as his play on the field or anything, he he was there and gone so fast, and we never really got a look at him, especially with the limited media availability with training camps and whatnot. So... That's something I, I mean, it's one of their draft picks, so we're going to see him next year in some capacity. I want to see what he's got on the field. and I mean, imagine if he was another another hit to the receiver room that we already have. Yeah, we don't know. We we just don't know, and that's, that's exciting to know that he could have added to what we already have had, which is pretty cool. Um, speaking of other receivers that could have, you know, contributed – uh, we got. We're talking about Jake Kumaro, um, Kenny Stills, and Tanner Gentry. Jake Kumaro, he's always he's he's just the practice squad bubble guy in case of injuries. In my opinion, he 
he had one catch for you know the touchdown in the Denver game, and I remember everyone in Bills Mafia was so upset when we let him go. And guys, like this, this is a wide receiver that couldn't even stick around on the active roster when Aaron Rodgers was throwing the ball to him. And Aaron Rodgers makes suspect wide receivers look great, and he can't even stick on that practice squad. So I'm, I personally think Jay Kumaro, I think he's good on the practice squad. I don't know if he's like a you know person that we have to start every week. If he's in the li- active lineup, I'm not going to be upset about it. Kenny Stills, you know, we signed him for you know um, practice squad uh, call ups for the playoffs. I really liked it uh, as a move from being. I don't really know anything about Kenny Stills. I just know that in this documentary called Game Changers, Kenny Stills has like this ritual of eating Popeyes before every single game it was it's it's it was pretty funny and then at at the end of um you know this experiment they just kind of showed the like your blood breakdown and they showed kenny stills blood breakdown in terms of plasma blood cells and fat and it it was so his tube was so cloudy and he just looked at it he's like yeah you know i'm probably not gonna eat popeyes again i Mm. bet he still eats popeyes i love popeyes um and Tanner Gentry, he just he just knows Allen. That's all I know about him. Justin, how do you feel about these three guys? Um, so I had the stat written down here somewhere. Um so Kumaro, he he's got something like twenty one career receptions and it's like five of them are for touchdowns. So like I don't know, there's something to be said about this dude finds a way to sneak open and get to the end zone mm-hmm. uh, as far as you know active rest or anything like that if somebody goes down like you said i don't i don't hate him being in the lineup he does um offer um special teams versatility mm-hmm. um he does punt coverage and all that um so i think he's a good guy to have around on the practice squad um gentry i i i couldn't tell you much about him i know I know he was teammates with Josh Allen in college, so that's it's probably a fun guy for him to have around on the practice squad. Right. You know, if 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 he's a guy that ever made it, it'd be a great story. Um, kind of reminds me of the the Madden career mode. When uh, what was it called? Are you talking about when you have teammates together and it like when it's like each the underdog experience? story? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know what you're referring to. Yeah, and you're like trying to play your way into the league as an undrafted rookie. Right. Kind of reminds me of that. Mm-hmm. Doesn't happen all that often, but we'll see what happens there. I think he's kind of just a guy to have around. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenny Stills is kind of interesting to me. Um, I think the way that the signing went, it was kind of automatically assumed that this was just like a playoff insurance policy. I think it might have been a little bit more big brained on Bean's end mm-hmm. as as not so much of an insurance policy for the playoffs, but an insurance policy going into this off season on not knowing how things would shake out with John Brown because he's kind of that type of receiver. He he's the take the top off the defense. And you know, he has to be released from the Texans because he wanted to stick on with a team that had a chance. So I might be reading too much into it. I do that from time to time, but I think that I think that was maybe more Beans insurance policy for you know if we can't figure it out with John Brown next year, this guy's available right now and he could help the team going forward. So he's intriguing to me. I'd rather have John Brown, mm-hmm. but he's intriguing to me. Yeah, you know that that's a good point. I forgot that uh, when the Bills acquired Kenny Stills, there was talk that you know Bean had like had like this affinity for Kenny Stills before he got released. So that's pretty exciting that we have him on the roster. So let's see let's see if he sticks around um, or and his role. If he doesn't, well, you know, it is what it is. All right, Justin, let's move on to free agents. Um, So let's play a game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list the top free agent wide receivers presented by Pro Football Network. I can't wait to say no. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, give me a yes, no, and give me a quick reason why. All right? Um, So number one, Allen Robinson. No. 
Why? Too much money. I would love him, but too much money. We'll never get him. Understandably. Number two, Chris Godwin. <laughs> That's going to be my answer for most of these. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, he's going to get 20 plus or he's going to s- stick around for a little hometown discount in Tampa Bay and run it back. Mm-hmm. Juju Smith Schuster, the TikTok drama queen from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I have never once gone out of my way to watch a TikTok, so he's eliminated for that reason alone. <laughs> Kenny Galladay, Detroit Lions. Uh, no, he's going to get overpaid. I would love to have him on the team, but he's going to get something 15, 18, something like that. You think? These are these are the type of contracts that I look at that I'm like, even if we freed up John Brown's $8 million just to bring somebody in, I'd rather have John Brown than Kenny Galladay. Fair point. Well, this, this next one should be interesting. Will Fuller, Houston Texans. Uh, he's too boomer bust for me. Okay. Um, number six, Marvin Jones Jr., Detroit Lions. No. No? Losing culture in Detroit. I don't want that coming over my way. Number seven, A.J. Green, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, five years ago, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, number eight, T.Y. Hilton, Indianapolis Colts. Uh... I think he's probably going to be out of the price range as well. Number nine, Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald is literally my favorite receiver to ever play the game. Larry Legend. What is he, like 38, though? How old is Larry Fitzgerald? He's the man. It seems like he's been in the league like since before I was born. I love Larry Fitzgerald, but... Uh, it's going to be a pass. How far down on this list do we have to go till we get to my guys, man? Hey, we're almost got... there. Um, and then number 10. Larry Fitzgerald Pete... is 37. I was close. Right. Number 10, pizza stealing Sammy Watkins, Kansas City Chiefs. The the lizard man. The lizard man. Lizard King? What do you call him? So, did you ever see this yeah, on Twitter? I, yeah. God. And he like said that he he was convinced he wasn't a human being. He's some sort of lizard alien or something like that well i'm convinced that he stole kate's pizza and that's the reason why they won a super bowl that that gluten-free pizza gave him the power that gave the it. chiefs the power to win the super bowl in my personal opinion he wasn't sammy, all weighed down by flour yeah sammy you're you owe kate like a million dollars kate i hope sammy watkins is listening to this show right I now know, kate if if you know that actually happens you know we do take a commission fee so you know that'd be pretty, Sam, pretty cool sammy watkins can't come back for two reasons one his number's been taken two even if he got his number taken even if he got his number back i've already changed the jersey <laughs> sammy okay. watkins can't come back all right, so uh, Justin, I, it sounds like you have some free agents that you have in mind uh, that you know maybe we could bring in the building. Um, real quick, I'll just tell you about some of the wide receivers that maybe you know I wouldn't be upset if they got in the building. Um, Kelly, Kenny Galladay, he's always been injured, so it, if they can bring him in on like a one-year prove that you can be healthy kind of deal, which Bean has done in the past. Um, I mean, look at Tyler Croft; he did it with him. I mean, that turned out okay i guess <laughs> he restructured the deal so he's gone after this year most likely um john ross i he's fast but he's not he's not good in any other category and then uh Nel- nelson aglor i john I ross he, is one that's on my list yeah nelson aglor I, th- I think he did a lot better after a change of scenery and then yeah those are those are the only wide receivers that, i guess that i'd be interested in for me personally um and i'm not interested in john ross uh justin i'll let you take over the free agents um so the first one i have down is deshaun jackson um he is a guy that's a bit long in the tooth as they like to say um he's still got the speed though and if if we're if we're talking you got to replace a guy like john brown in that defined role um I think he could be I think he could be an option there. The the fun thing about looking at free agents here is assuming we largely have our stable of receivers back, 
Um, it's kind of like tinkering with the tail end of, of the depth chart here, which I know Bean loves to do. Um, so that's why a guy like John Ross is intriguing to me. Um, he ran like a 4 three forty. He's just stupid fast. Um, and he's been, he's been playing in Cincinnati, who's, you know, I mean, they got Joe Burrow this year. He went down with injury, but who's he been playing with, you know? Is it you got to eliminate the variables? Is it John Ross that can't play or the team as a whole that's just been terrible? Um, our producer's chirping in here. John Ross ran a 4-2-2. So, yeah, he ran a 4-2-2, but he can't do an out route. <laughs> yeah, well, develop him. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's a low-risk, high-reward situation. If he doesn't work out, just cut him again. Yeah. But I think he's intriguing. Maybe I'm being um, too hard on the man. Yeah. Um, Cordero Patterson talked about on a previous show. Um, he kind of intrigues me in that if we were looking to consolidate the roles type of guy, um, if you're going to run it back with Andre Roberts and Isaiah McKenzie, then I'm all set on Patterson. Um, but if it's something where you're looking to kind of consolidate that and make it one guy, right? he interests me in that. And then one that I know that you're a big fan of is my guy Zay Jones. Let's bring him back. God, are you serious? No, not at all. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, dude, I'm going to shut my laptop right now. I'm going to end this podcast. God, Zay Jones. Oh, Listen, God. Zay Zay Jones is my cautionary tale to anybody listening to this show to not trust anything I have to say about any prospect. <laughs> I was absolutely enamored with the Zay Jones pick. I I was so psyched to have him. That dude, his whole scouting report was he was just setting records in college. Mm-hmm. If the ball came near him, he caught it. Like the dude was amazing in college, and then he gets to the NFL, and he can't catch the ball. Like. Right. The coolest thing I saw him do as a Buffalo Bill was that levitating up thing. Oh, that was yeah. pretty cool. When we played, and the I think he had a lightsaber battle. But yeah. yeah, for the touchdown, I was at that game where the Bills lost on Thursday night football in the Meadowlands. That was that was a tough loss to be in, uh, just to be around those Jets fans going like, ha 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 ha, ha you guys suck, and I'm just like, oh, God damn it, like <laughs> see me um, in two years, right. Um, Zay Jones, you know, you know, I hope that he has a good career and that, you know, he ascends as a player, but I, just like you, I thought he was really good coming out of college. It just didn't transition that well, um, as it should have, but you know, it is what it is. Um, anyways, moving on to some draft prospects. I, Justin, I know that you've done a lot of work with this, so I know you have a handful of guys I only have one person to really talk about. And if the Bills do pick a wide receiver at number 30, and if he's there, Kadarius Tony from Florida, I wouldn't be upset about that. I, I already I already been on the record saying I want the Bills to invest in their offense with their first pick or their second or their third, you know, whatever. I, I just wanted like a higher draft pick on the offense somewhere. A Kadarius, nice sexy pick. Yeah. Kadarius Tony, to your point, Put Andre Roberts on the left, put Isaiah McKenzie on the right, slap them together, you got Kadarius Tony. Justin, how do you feel about Kadarius Tony? And tell us about the other guys that you've done some research on. Um, so Kadarius Tony's a, a guy that I love. Um, if he made it to 30, I, I, I would be fully on board with that. A um, couple things I really like about him. He's got the blazing fast, like quick touch speed. Um but he also played quarterback in high school, had bananas numbers. Um, he played some running back in college. Um, so he's kind of got a little bit more of that, that field vision for when you do the jet sweep and, you know, setting up your blocks and, and hitting that space. Um, I don't think he makes it to 30, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that. Um, what what I think is more likely because we're in a, a situation kind of where receiver is probably the biggest strength on the offense, and it's also touted as another very deep receiver draft. Um, I think it's unlikely that we would do that at 30. I think 30 you're probably looking at maybe replacing Milano, maybe reinvesting in the offensive line. Um but if you're doubling down on a strength and you got a guy like that, 
I'm fully on board for it. Um, so I kind of tried to focus people that I was looking at more into the mid mid to late rounds mm-hmm. um, on the type of receiver that I think the Bills could use. Um, and I think that would be kind of looking at a speed guy if you were to have to replace um, John Brown in the short term and then looking at, you know, if you keep Beasley in the building a couple more years, you got to replace that high end, uh, high level slot play. Um, mm-hmm. So, one of my favorite prospects this year is Rondell Moore out of Purdue, um, and a lot of these guys are like in the five nine, five eleven range. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with Rondell Moore is this dude's really explosive. He's super fun to watch with the ball in his hands. He's also only played seven games over the last two seasons with injuries. Mm. So, so is that big, something? Is that something you want to? Yeah, do you want to take a risk on it? Um, is it kind of like freak situations? Either way, I think he's probably a tail end of the first round prospect. That's probably going to get pushed down, maybe towards round two. See what happens there, but I think he's. I think he'd be a lot higher on a lot of boards if he if he didn't have the injury concerns. Right. I think so with I think those he, with those injuries, it's unfortunately going to push uh, the young man's draft position down. I mean, you know, I, if he is a first to second round talent, um, and the Bills could scoop him up at a you know at a spot where the pick presents a lot of value, I I'd, I'd be down for it. Uh, all right, so then going down, um, just projection-wise, same last name, different player, um, Elijah Moore. Uh, he's he's another one of those really small, twitchy receivers. Um, but watching his his film, this is a guy that reminds me of like a Beasley type player. Uh, he's he's going across the middle. Dude's fearless. He'll go into all those dirty spots and and make the tough catches and grind for extra yards. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing about, well, two two of the things that I like the most about him is, one, when the defense is running zone, he finds that soft spot. And and he'll cut the root root short and just sit down in that zone and just wait for the ball to come to him. Versus when you're running across and somebody else picks you up, he finds the sweet spots. The other thing I really liked about this guy is um, he's really good at working back to the quarterback uh, when the play breaks down. And I think that's a super valuable thing to have with Josh Allen because so many times he goes to the, the improvisation back there where you know he's rolling to the right and the whole play breaks down. He's just looking for somebody to come back to him. So I think he's really valuable in that regard. And I think this is the type of guy that could be the heir apparent to to the Beasley role. Right. So Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, the more I hear it, the more mm-hmm. I like it. I hey, like you got it. Any, you got anyone else you want to talk about? I got two more. All right. And this is going towards um, so the same type of fit, and this is largely what I was kind of looking for because I think it's the type of player that – that the Bills would be looking for right now. Um, Daz Newsom out of USC, or I'm sorry, uh, University of North Carolina. Um, same type of player, just does the jet sweeps, hits the holes hard. He's got blazing fast speed. I really wish we had the combine this year because I want to see what these people officially run for their 40 times. It seems like all the projections out there are like just really safe, not taking chances, but He's projected like a four four nine, I think it was, but mm-hmm. this is the type of dude where you're when you're watching him on the field, it looks like he's running faster. Uh, go back to the running back show where you translate it to what miles per hour he's running. That dude's fast. Mm-hmm. Um, he could work in the return game. Um, somebody that he's interesting to me, and in the mock drafts I'm looking at, this is a guy that goes in the late rounds, kind of. Shoot your shot and see see if it pans out. And then the last guy I had that was intriguing to me is uh, Warren Jackson 
Uh, this guy is 6'6", 215, and the knock on him with his scouting report is he he doesn't have the quickest he doesn't he doesn't have the quickest feet to get off press coverage. Um, he doesn't have the speed to burn you down the sideline. Kind of kind of like a Kelvin Benjamin type of scouting report, but. I mean, if you're taking a flyer in the sixth, seventh round, and you got a guy that's six six, then just go stand in the end zone and let me toss it up to you. I'd be interested in uh, seeing a guy like that. Uh, just add a little bit more size to the to the wide receiver room. Right. Um, those all sound like some pretty good draft prospects, so I'll definitely have to do my own homework um, after this episode to check those guys out. Um, Justin, what a great episode. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? Uh, no, just this This is a really fun episode for me. I think this, this uh, position group is the strongest that we have on the team, so it's super fun to talk about kind of Every time I talk about the group, it kind of makes me relive some of the moments from last year and just how dangerous they were and how much fun it was. And Mm -hmm. it's largely because it's been so long that it's been such a horrible weakness for us. And we just had like these street free agents that we were trotting out there as starters. And we just have this top flight group right now. And if it's not the best in the NFL, it's top two or three. And I just love that that's part of our team right now. Yeah, it's definitely one of the brighter spots on this team as a whole. Um, So from all of us here at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, we want to thank you for listening to this episode. Um, Again, you can find us on most social media platforms by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. If you want to be on one of our episodes, uh, give us a DM or email us at thewanderingbuffalopodcast at gmail.com. Please, if you have any comments, uh, constructive criticism, uh, just, you know, give us a review. We're on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify, and we're on YouTube. So subscribe, like, comment, and, uh, you know, we we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Justin, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me at jgods22 on social media. Um, also, just at the bon- Wandering Buffalo. Uh, we keep an eye on that. We read all the comments. Um, we're putting some posts out there just to get some fan engagement, see what you think about things, and mm-hmm. maybe look at a few extra things to talk about on the shows. Right. And you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at 2 Um for, Until then, we'll speak to you guys next week. We're going to talk about everything about uh, the offensive line. And you know what? We might sprinkle a little tight end. Haven't figured it out yet. But... Uh, You know, uh, we would appreciate if you guys uh, gave us your input. So uh, until then, we'll talk to you then. Justin? Adios. Thanks for joining us. Go Bills. Go Bills.